intracerebral group of nuclei that are formed by the gray matter. If you can remember, we said that the gray matter related to the cerebral hemisphere is basically into two parts. We have the one coating the cerebral cortex, that is the, sorry, the one coating the cerebral hemisphere, that is the cerebral cortex, and those gray matter that are grouped together within the cerebral hemisphere, and those are the nuclei we are talking about. So, but before I discuss the intracerebral nuclei with you, let me try to recapitulate, you know, for you, the embryonic, you know, uh, neural tube. If you can recollect your neuroembryology well, the nervous system started developing earlier than any other system. Why? Because of its own importance, because of its own significance. And entirely, the nervous system developed from ectoderm. You know, we have three basic, you know, germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So this nervous system in general developed from ectoderm, and from the neural plate, neural group, the neural tube. Immediately after the formation of the neural tube, the tube now develops three important vesicles, what we call brain vesicles. So all these are called brain vesicles. And they are actually called primary brain vesicles. So since we have primary brain vesicles, it means we are going to also have secondary brain vesicles. So now we have the neural tube after it is development towards its cranial end because this is the cranial end of the embryo and this is the tail end of the embryo. So the neural tube after it is formed, it is in its own cranial part, it develops three swellings, what we call primary brain vesicles. The first one, which is the most cranial, we call it prosencephalon, followed by another swelling, dorsal to it, and that is what we call mesencephalon. And then the last of the three vesicles is what we call rhombencephalon. So we have three swellings, known as three primary vesicles. The prosencephalon later on divides into two parts, what we call telencephalon and diencephalon. It is this telencephalon that will later give rise to the two cerebral hemispheres that we discuss. So the telencephalon give rise to the two cerebral hemispheres, while the diencephalon as intracerebral gray matter, which we are going to discuss now. So it means that the cerebral hemisphere, as well as what it contains, the intracerebral nuclei, they all develop from the prosencephalon. Remember back that the mesencephalon, it was, it is later on, it later on gave rise to the midbrain, while the rhombencephalon divides further into metencephalon and myelencephalon. And then the metencephalon further subdivided into pons and cerebellum. So one of the divisions of the rhombencephalon gave rise to the pons and the cerebellum. You can remember we said the cerebellum is our own small brain. So our own small brain develops from the rhombencephalon. So the pons and the cerebellum develop from here, and the myelencephalon give rise to the medulla oblongata. If you can remember, I said these three vesicles are called primary brain vesicles. After the division of this prosencephalon to give rise to the telencephalon and diencephalon, the encephalon to give rise to the metencephalon and myelencephalon, these four divisions are called secondary brain vesicles. Are you clear? So we now know what are the primary brain vesicles, which are three. Now the primary brain vesicles are these subdivisions of the prosencephalon and the rhombencephalon. 
So that means, suffice to say that the primary brain vesicles is what you call the prosencephalon, which is the forebrain, that is another name for it. Then the mesencephalon, which is the mid or middle brain. And then the rhombencephalon, which is the hind brain. Are you clear? So we have now seen how these structures came into being. So what we are going to discuss now is the diencephalon, which resulted from the prosencephalon, part of the primary brain vesicle. So when we talk about the diencephalon, it consists of about five groups of nuclei. These nuclei are five, what we call the thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, epithalamus, and metathalamus. So we have five important nuclei that group together to form the diencephalon together. So it is this group of nuclei that we are going to discuss. Apart from this diencephalic nuclei, there are other nuclei related to this diencephalic nuclei, what we call the basal ganglia or basal nuclei. It's rather called, we rather call it nuclei rather than ganglia. The reason why actually anatomists of nowadays, we don't accept the name ganglia is because of what we have defined during our introduction, which we said ganglia are conglomeration of cell bodies outside, while the nuclei are a group of cell bodies inside central nervous system. And that is where actually basal ganglia in most of your textbooks of anatomy are named like that, which to us presently is a misnomer. And that is why actually we want to adopt this name basal nuclei. So it is the appropriate name. So this basal nuclei also consists of group of nuclei within the cerebral cortex. And this includes what you call the lentiform nucleus and, you know, the caudate nucleus. Caudate what? Caudate nucleus. So this lentiform nucleus includes what we call the putamen and the globus, globus pallidus. So the two together, you get my point, the two together, lentiform nucleus and the coded nucleus, they are also called corpus striatum. Corpus what? Corpus striatum. So we have now seen this group of nuclei that are found within the cerebral hemisphere. So now, for you to be able to understand the location and the relations of all this group of nuclei within the cerebral hemisphere, we need to cut some sections, whether transverse sections like this or coronal section like this. So we can vividly understand the anatomy of the cerebral nuclei by making these sections. So by the time you now cut, you know, the transverse section like this across the junction between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe below, you remove the top, you are going to see this. You get it? So now, this horizontal section of the cerebral hemisphere, you are going to see this intracerebral nuclei. So, if this is anterior aspect of the cerebral hemisphere, this is the posterior aspect. So it means that this is part of the frontal lobe here, and this is part of the occipital lobe at the back here. And so this is just part of either frontal portion of the frontal and the temporal below, and this is it. So in the middle line here, you are going to see some midline structures. So in the middle line here, this is just midline, uh, midline here. So by the side of the midline here, anteriorly, 
you have spaces. You see, if you can remember, we said each of the cerebral hemispheres has spaces. And those spaces are called ventricles. And these ventricles, they are divided into three, you know, or four. We have first, uh, first ventricle, second ventricle, third ventricle, and fourth ventricle. Some of you may likely see, why did I say first and second? It is the first and second that are now being matched together to form what you call lateral ventricle. So the first and the second ventricles are the lateral ventricle, and then we have the third ventricle, and then we have the fourth ventricle. The space within this person, kephalon, you get it, is, you know, uh, is, 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 is the lateral ventricle we are talking about, and then the space within the midbrain here is the fourth ventricle, which we are going to discuss later on. So now we've seen that we have some of the spaces that have been, you know, seen when you cut that section in the frontal area. There you have what you call anterior horn of the lateral ventricle because the lateral ventricle has anterior horn, body, and posterior horn. So part of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle is seen when you make this cross-section. And so I'm sure you can remember our internal capsule. We have discussed internal capsule, part of the projection fibers coming from the cortex and descend down as descending fibers. So this internal capsule, as we said before, forms something like a B-shaped structure, which is this one. Are you clear? And this B-shaped structure now is as a result of the pushing of the lentiform nucleus towards the midline. So this is the lentiform nucleus here, which is just like a wedge. Initially, the internal capsule is vertically downward. So by the time this lentiform nucleus now pushes toward the midline, pushes those descending fibers, so it bends and forms caps, so that, so that it forms something like a B-shaped structure. So that at the end of the day, the descending fibers, those projection fibers, the internal capsule, it has one of the limb facing antero medially, and then you have another bend which is facing postero laterally. Are you clear? That is the anatomical description. So you have anterior limb facing antero medially, and then you have posterior limb facing postero laterally because it's facing like this. You get it. So you have this internal capsule. So lateral to the internal capsule. This is our wedge-shaped structure, what you call the lentiform nucleus. This lentiform nucleus, which is this one, on this side, it is made up of two groups of nuclei. This nuclei, we have what we call the putamen, and then we have the globus pallidus. The putamen is this one, that is the most lateral aspect of the lentiform nucleus. Are you clear? And then we have the globus pallidus, which is the innermost. And this globus pallidus is further subdivided into internal part and external part. So we have what we call globus pallidus interna and globus pallidus externa. The two together, they form the globus pallidus. So we have now seen the lentiform nucleus. So this lentiform nucleus Lateral to it on either side, on this side and on this side, you have the external capsule. So since here we have the internal capsule, here on the lateral side of the lentiform nucleus, we also have the internal capsule. Are you clear? And just lateral to the external capsule, we have one sheet of gray matter known as cholesterol. We are going to discuss all this. These are all introduction. So we have now seen this, and so, what are the structures on the medial side of the internal capsule? We have now seen the gray matter on the lateral side of the internal capsule. That is the lentiform nucleus, made up of putamen on the lateral side and globus pallidus on the medial side. And we said that the globus pallidus is further subdivided into two. Globus pallidus interna and globus pallidus externa. You get my point? So we have seen this. And on the medial side, anterior 
medial to the anterior lip, uh, anterior lip. So we can even say in the simple term, medial to the anterior limb, we have what you call the head of the caudate nucleus. We have the head of the caudate nucleus and on the posterior limb, medial to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, we have these two diencephalic, part of the diencephalic nucleus, that is the, the thalamus. So you have thalamus on the left side, you have another thalamus on the right side. So you have two thalamus, you know, related to the posterior limb of each of the internal capsule. Are you clear? And among all these diencephalic nuclei that I made mention, the two thalamus are the largest. So the remaining ones are just small, small nuclei. But thalamus on either side, they are big. They are just like an egg. You know, so it is own shape. Each of the shape of the thalamus is just like an egg. So each of these two thalamus relates to the posterior limb of the internal capsule. And the two together are linked in the middle line by what we call interthalamic adhesions. So the two thalamus we said they have been joined together by the two thalamic, by, 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 by the thalamic adhesions. And below each of the thalamus, that is what we call subthalamic nuclei. You get it? Ideally, actually, we are not supposed to see this in this section. It's only in this section that you can see the hypothalamus here. But here, what you are going to see here is like you are going to see. Let me try and uh, draw this. You are going to see what we call the metathalamic nuclei. You have what you call one, one large nucleus on the medial side, and then there is another nucleus on the a little bit lateral side. So you have what we call medial genocular body, MGB, and then we have lateral geniculate body. Are you clear? So all this lateral genocular body and the medial genocular body, they are part of what we call metathalamic nuclei or metathalamus in general. So we have now seen this diagram. So now if we remove, if I now cut a section of this, so this is a section like this. You know, this is what? This is a transverse section like this. So now I make a sagittal section like this, and then I look at it on this side, sideways. I'm going to see something like this. So the caudate nucleus is just like a C-shaped structure so that it curves over, if this is the thalamus, if this is the thalamus, and this is the caudate nucleus, the caudate nucleus is just like, you know, uh, uh, a fish, so to say. It has a head, it has a body, and then it has a tail. You get my point? So if I assume this is the thalamus, thalamus looks like an egg, egg of a hen. So if this is the thalamus, and this is the caudate, the caudate nucleus, with, with this, that C-shaped like that. So it curves over each of the thalamus like that. So it vents over it so that the body lies on top of the thalamus, the head lies anterior to the thalamus, and then the tail passes behind and below the thalamus. And that is exactly what I have drawn here. So here you can see that the caudate nucleus which is part of the basal nuclei, consists of the head, body, tail. And the tail end of the caudate nucleus, it is bulbula. That bulbula aspect or bulbula end of the caudate nucleus is called amygdaloid body. It's called what? Amygdaloid body body. So we now know that the distal end of the tail of the caudate nucleus is bulbula or bulbous. So it is called amygdaloid body. So this is the metatalami I tried to draw here 
you know, uh, by the side of the thalamus. So we have one body on the medial side. If we assume that this is the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. This is the medial side of the thalamus. So here we have the medial genocular body, one group of nuclei together like that, round in shape by the medial side of the thalamus, below and medial. That is what you call the medial genocular body. And the lateral genocular body is behind and lateral to the back of the thalamus. So we have lateral and medial genocular body. All these nuclei, we are going to see their own functions later on. These are all just a, a, a preamble or a, an introduction. So now we have seen the transverse section of the cerebral hemisphere. We have also seen the suggested section of the cerebral hemisphere, whereby I was able to show you the transverse section of the intracerebral nuclei and also the side view of the thalamus and it is associated, you know, uh, beta thalami by the side as well as the caudate nucleus. And by the time I now take a coronal section like this and then I look at it from the back, that is what I'm going to see here. So when I now make this section like that, you know, here is part of the corpus callosum, here. You get it. And so, so telling you, I'm going to see all those structures that are, we have seen here when you make that section. So here, what you are also going to see because when you now cut like this, you are going to cut across some portion of the midbrain because this is coron uh, coronal section. So here, just below, you have the thalamus here. So below the thalamus are also group of nuclei here what we call the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus is a sheet of gray matter just below each of the thalamus. And so we have one sheet on one side, you have one sheet on the other side. So you have subthalamus, you have hypothalamus here, you have another hypothalamus here. That is why it's called hypothalamus, group of nuclei part of the diencephalic group of nuclei that lie below, like, uh, before, below the thalamus. And that is why it is called hypothalamus. Under the thalamus, under each of the thalamus is another group of nuclei known as subthalamus. There's a difference between below and under. You get my point? For example, now this is my fist, right? I can see that this marker is lying. Is it anterior or posterior? Anterior, right? Is it below or above? So this is hypho. If I put it here, sub, that is exactly what it means. So there's a difference between below and under. So this subthalamic nuclei lies under each of the hypo, uh, under each of the thalamus. And so we have subthalamic nuclei on either side of the thalamus. And then we have another sheet of, you know, uh, gray matter that is related to the midbrain, what we call substantia nigra, you understand, which are all part of the basal ganglia or basal nuclei that we are going to discuss later on. So all this group of nuclei that I've just written, you know, on this board as the nuclei that we are going to uh, discuss in in our lectures of the intracerebral nuclear system.